Hi everyone, it's Kunihiro. Thank you for coming back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make tempura step by step. So let's begin. Okay, so first I want to show you the ingredients in tempura butter. I have 100 grams of cake flour, 180 milliliters of water, and one large size egg. Now, there are a few things I want you to remember when making tempura butter. First, the biggest enemy of tempura butter is gluten. Gluten produces when the protein contained in flour mixes with water. So the more gluten in your tempura butter, the less crispy and heavier your tempura becomes. So to achieve light and crispy tempura, you have to use flour with the least protein content, which is cake flour. And the second important thing is that all ingredients must be cold when mixing because warmer temperatures will produce gluten quickly. So please cool all the ingredients in the fridge first, including the cake flour. So while waiting for them to cool down, we'll prepare all the other ingredients first and come back to making the tempura butter. Today I'm using eggplant, carrot, broccoli, shiso leaf, kabocha squash, shiitake mushrooms, and shrimp. When making tempura, I recommend using relatively dry vegetables like those. Watery vegetables such as cucumber and tomato make tempura coating soggy very quickly, so please avoid them. And the best size for the shrimp is 16 to 20 counts per pound. You don't need anything bigger than that. Now let's cut vegetables. The first one is kabocha squash. This one is kind of hard. So you need both hands to cut it. The thickness of each slice is about 5 mm. Once deep fried, it will shrink a little. So if you cut it thinner than that, you won't taste the kabocha. But if you cut it thicker than that, tempera coating will burn before kabocha cooks completely. So please be careful. The next one is carrot. You don't need to peel the skin, but please make sure to wash it first. Cut it diagonally. The thickness is the same as kabocha squash, 5 mm. The next one is broccoli. Since I will make tempura with a small amount of oil today, if the broccoli is too big, it will touch the bottom of the pot and get burnt quickly. So I will cut it in half and make it smaller. Okay, the next one is shiitake mushroom. First, please cut off the stem, turn it over, and tilt the knife a little bit and make four shadow cuts at the center of the mushroom to make it look prettier. When making those cuts, please don't change the angle of the knife. You only need to rotate the mushroom and make shadow cuts at the same angle. Shiso leaf is very simple, you just need to cut off the stem. That's it. Next, I'll show you how to cut eggplant. Please cut off the top. Then split it in half. Then make a few cuts through the eggplant lengthwise, but leave the edge connected. Then at the fourth cut, please cut all the way through. And make a few more cuts again. But again, make sure to leave the top part connected. Now press it gently with your fingers and fan out the eggplant. Those cuts will not only make eggplant look more beautiful, but also shorten the frying time. So one, two, three, and cut all the way, and one, two, three. That's it. Okay, we are done with all the vegetables. So now let's prepare shrimps. The first thing we do is take off the shell until this line. Now 
and next remove this spiky shell above the tail. This part contains some water, so if you don't remove it, the water will pop and oil will splatter when deep frying. So please don't forget to remove it. And once you finish removing shells from all the shrimps, make a shallow incision on the back of the shrimp to remove the vein. Once it's open, you should see a vein in the middle. Well, this one doesn't have it. If you don't see the vein at this point, don't cut any deeper than this. Sometimes they don't have it. Okay, this one has a vein. So please take it out with your knife like this. Then the next thing we do is cut off the tip of the tail a little bit and make it look nicer. After cutting, the tail will look like this. These edges will stand out and make your shrimp tempura look more beautiful. Then open up the tail and scrape excess water and dirt out of the tail using the tip of the knife. Once again, if you skip this part, the water will pop and oil will splatter when deep frying. So please don't skip this part. Plus by cleaning the tail, a beautiful red color will come out once deep fried. After cleaning, the tail will look like this. And once you finish cleaning the tail, please wash them once and take off remnants of the vein and dirt on the tail. Then dry the shrimps with paper towels very well. If you don't dry them well at this point, your shrimp tempura won't become crispy. Instead, it will become soggy. Excess moisture on ingredients is another enemy of tempura. Next, please put 5 to 6 shallow incisions on the belly side of the shrimps. Please don't cut too deep, only about 2 millimeters is fine. Next, place the shrimp on the belly side down and press it down against the cutting board with your fingers to break the muscles. I'm doing this to prevent the shrimps from curling up when deep frying. And shrimp is ready. This is the final form before deep frying. I'll show you one more time. This time, please listen to the sounds when I break the muscles. And go over one more time and make sure you don't hear any more breaking sounds. That's it. Next, I'm going to show you how to make tempera sauce. So to make tempera sauce, you need 100 milliliters of mirin, 100 milliliters of soy sauce, and 400 milliliters of dashi. Okay, so first, please add mirin and soy sauce to dashi. And bring it to a boil. And once it starts boiling, turn down the heat and let it simmer for two more minutes so that the alcohol in the mirroring will evaporate. And two minutes later, turn off the heat and the sauce is ready. I'm going to heat it again just before I serve tempura. Next, I'll prepare some grated daikon radish. I'm going to add it to my tempura sauce later.
please transfer the grated daikon radish into a strainer and squeeze the juice out gently. Don't squeeze too much, we want to keep some moisture in it. So after squeezing, the grated daikon will look like this. It's still nice and moist. Next, I'm going to coat all the ingredients with cake flour. So please get some cake flour on a tray. Then put the ingredients on it. Cover them with the cake flour. Then dust off the excess flour. That's it. Coating with flour will help tempera butter stick to ingredients better. Shitek mushrooms and broccolis have uneven surfaces, so you need to dust off the excess flour very well. Otherwise the excess flour left in them will make your tempera very soggy. And don't forget to fan out the eggplant before putting it in the flour. And shiso leaf needs coating only on the back side. And when you do shrimp, please coat only the meat portion. The tail doesn't need a coating. So after coating with flour, they will look like this. Now that we have finished preparing all the other ingredients, let's make tempera butter. The first thing you have to do is sieve the cake flour with a strainer. By doing this, the cake flour will dissolve more quickly in the water. Next, put the egg into the water and stir it until well mixed. Then please add the cake flour into the mixture little by little and mix. A very important point when mixing tempera butter is no mixing too much. If you mix it too much, more gluten will produce, and your tempera will become soggy. So I'm not really mixing it. It's more like I'm sinking the cake flour into the mixture. After mixing, your tempera butter should look like this. It's very watery and has lots of lumps in it. But that's totally fine. This is the consistency I look for. Okay, since all the prep is done, let's start heating oil. So fill a medium sized pot with vegetable oil up to 3 cm. And turn on the heat to medium. Alright, so this is the setup when I make tempera. Basically, I keep everything within my reach. So I place a cooling rack on the left of the oil. So as soon as tempera is ready, I can put the tempera on the rack. And I place my sieve here. I use this one to remove tempera bits from the oil, so that I can keep the oil clean. And I wanted tempera bits go into this bowl. The oil is right in the middle, and I place the tempera butter next to it but not too close to the oil, because I don't want my tempera butter to be warm. And all the ingredients are placed next to the tempera butter, so I can just grab it, dip in the butter, and drop in the oil. 
and I keep a clean towel here to wipe my hand since I touch tempera butter often. And the chopsticks are here. I use them when I touch tempera in the oil. If you don't have chopsticks, a tongue is fine too. Okay, first let's check the temperature of the oil. So you need to drop a little bit of tempera butter into the oil like this. The tempera butter sank to the bottom and 1 to seconds later came back up. That is about 150 to 160 degrees Celsius and it's still too low. It's after 30 seconds. Let me try one more time. So drop the tempera butter into the oil. This time the tempera butter sank to the bottom and came right back up. That is about 160 to 170 degrees Celsius and it's a suitable temperature for deep frying vegetables, mm. especially when making tempera with a small amount of oil. Okay, so let me start with kabocha squash. So dip them in the butter and drop them into the oil. And if they stick to each other like this, you have to separate them right away before the butter gets hard. If you wait too long, the butter will come off when separating them. And don't forget to recheck the temperature at this point. And if you notice the temperature went down a lot, you need to turn up the heat. But don't worry too much because the temperature is not gonna drop drastically unless you overcrowd the pot with ingredients. So when I make tempera at home, I always cook little by little to control the temperature of the oil more easily. I always cook tempera between medium and low heat, and never on high heat. And remove tempera bits constantly to keep the oil clean. Flip them over every minute, otherwise the bottom side of kabocha will get burnt before it cooks completely. Recheck the temperature and maintain 160 to 170 degrees Celsius all the time. After deep frying them for about 3 minutes, you will notice the cooking sounds get quieter and you will see fewer bubbles around the kabocha. Those are the signs tempera is ready. So please take it out, shake off the oil, and put it on the rack. At this time, please do not stack the tempera on top of each other. Please clean up the oil. Check the temperature and deep fry next ingredient. Okay, next one is carrots. So dip them in the butter and drop them into the oil. The cooking time for this one is about 2 minutes and a half. So just like a kabocha squash, all you have to do is flip them over every minute, check and maintain the temperature sometimes, and keep the oil clean until the carrots are fully cooked. Finally, shake off the excess oil and put it on the rack. And when you deep fry shiitake mushrooms, put them into the oil with the cap facing up. If you put them in the oil upside down, the butter on the top part will come off and it doesn't look good. 30 to 40 seconds later, when the butter on the top sets a little, you can flip them over. After that, Flip them over every minute and deep fry them for a total of 3 minutes. Please don't forget to clean up the oil and maintain the temperature. The next one's eggplant. Please fan out the eggplant and dip it in the butter like this. 
and gently put it into the oil with the skin side facing up. And if you want to give additional coating on the skin side, please apply the butter like this. It makes the eggplant look much prettier. And when the coating on the top sets a little, flip the eggplant over. Since eggplant is relatively easy to get burnt, I recommend flipping them over every 40 seconds. And deep fry them for a total of 2 minutes. And when deep frying broccolis, Dip them in the butter, shake off the excess butter a little, and put them into the oil with the smooth side down. One minute later, flip them over, but please don't leave them florets facing down for a long time, because florets get burnt very quickly. So 20 to 30 seconds later, please flip them back again. And leave them like this for another 1 minute or so. And just before taking them out of the oil, flip them one more time and deep fry for 20 seconds and make the forward side crispy. 20 seconds later, flip them back and take them out of the oil. The total deep frying time is 2.5 to 3 minutes. If you want to leave a little crunchiness in the middle, I recommend 2.5 minutes. And when you deep fry shiso leaf, get the batter only on the back side of the shiso leaf. And put it into the oil with the front side up. Let me do one more. And after 30 seconds, flip them once and deep fry for another 10 seconds. Then flip them back and take them out of the oil. The cooking time for shiso leaf is only 40 seconds. If you deep fry longer than that, shiso leaf will lose its color. So please be careful. Finally, I'm going to make shrimp tempura. The suitable oil temperature for deep frying shrimp is 170 to 180 degrees Celsius. At this temperature range, tempura butter barely touches the bottom and comes back up. Now take one piece of shrimp, make sure to hold the tail, and dip it in the batter like this and gently put it in the oil with the belly side facing up. And as soon as the shrimp comes back to the surface, dip your fingers in the butter and drizzle the butter over the shrimp like this. By doing this, you can create extra crispy shrimp tempura. Since the deep frying time for shrimp is only 1 minute to 1 minute and a half, please apply the additional butter quickly. Otherwise, shrimp will be overcooked before additional butter becomes crispy. So I recommend deep frying one shrimp at a time until you get comfortable with it. Okay, this is good. Shrimp tempura is ready. After deep frying everything, please clean up the oil one last time. And once the oil cools down, you can filter the oil and save it for later use. If you want to keep the tempera bits, please spread them out on paper towels and remove the excess oil. Then transfer them to a ziplock and store them in the freezer. I use them as a topping for udon and soba noodle. Alright, so this is all the tempera I made. The crispiness of the tempera stays for about 30 minutes. 
but tempera is best eaten when it's super hot and crispy. So I recommend deep frying each ingredient one more time, for 10 to 20 seconds at 170 degrees Celsius just before serving. I believe that is the best way to enjoy tempera at home. And when I arrange tempera on a plate, I always make it look three-dimensional. So I always place hard vegetables like carrots and kabocha squash first, and lean the rest of the vegetables and shrimps against them. And at the end, put some grated daikon radish next to the tempura, and your delicious tempura is done. Reheat the tempura sauce and pour it into a bowl, and it's ready to eat. Right, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. So if you did, please hit the like button and leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye. いただきます。